All right, joining me once again here on the Matthew Filipovich Show is my good friend Amanda Marcotte. Amanda is an author, a writer, a blogger. She is the host of Reality Cast at RH Reality Check. Her work has been seen on Slate, Salon, Alternate. She is, of course, the writer of Pandagon at Raw Story, which you can find at rawstory.com. You can also find her on Twitter at Amanda Marcotte. Amanda, thank you so much for being on the show again. Thanks for having me. All right, so Amanda, this last weekend, you were one of the speakers at the Women in Secularism conference. And while you wrote that most of the conference was positive, and we're going to get to that because that's actually the more important issue here, um, the conference actually got off to a pretty bumpy and disappointing start. Tell us what happened at the beginning of the conference. Well, it started with the uh, CEO of the Center for Inquiry, which was the organization that was hosting the Women in Secularism Conference. Um, He got up and he made the opening remarks, which usually at conferences like this are things like, we'd like to welcome the attendees, the speakers are great, have fun, be good kids, et cetera. (laughs) Right? Right. Uh, Instead, he went off on this very strange speech where... He declined to welcome people for some reason, saying they should already know that they're welcome, which I didn't really completely understand. He um, then proceeded to sort of lecture the attendees on, I guess, their tone, Um, basically implying that feminist skeptics who who I generally would argue have been incredibly reasoned and evidence-based in their arguments or why skepticism needs to have more feminism in it, um, have been put under this harassment campaign, this horrible, abusive amount of online abuse, like this just outpouring of online abuse. And he basically implied that it was a both sides kind of problem when I think you could fairly well prove that it's not, um, that the feminist side has been... The, the victims and the anti-feminists have been the attackers. And his only real evidence for this both sides argument, he didn't really even talk about the harassment side of it, so he just sort of ignored the actual bad guys to scold the good guys and tell them that they need to be careful not to use the word privilege to tell, as a, a silencing technique, to tell our opposition to shut up. Uh, again, this was a claim he had, like, no evidence for anybody doing. Um, so the crowd was pretty upset. Um, they, yeah. He came up, he attacked a bunch of straw men, he basically mansplained and lectured uh, a bunch <laughs> right. of women about what feminism is and how it should be conducted. He told them to be better behaved while ignoring the fact <laughs> that our opposition is basically the only bad guys doing the only things wrong here. Yeah. Um, you know, and he held up a behavior that I've never seen any mainstream like thought leaders in the skeptical movement engage in is something we shouldn't do, you know, but they don't. Yeah. Do so. No, and what, what's crazy again is like this is the opening, t- the very like the like the first thing that happens at the conference. He he doesn't even well say welcome. He's just like, yeah, women, you should already feel welcome, you know. And and if you don't feel welcome, you're stupid, you know. And it's just like, what what what's your problem? And then goes on to like set the set the tone as as like confrontational and be like. You know, this is the, the you know, a uh, conference for, you know, women in secularism. That's the point of the conference. And it's like, yeah, you know, you know who stinks? Women in secular, secular women. They're the ones who stink. And like then, uh, you know, I know he got into a, a bit of a, a, a back and forth with like Rebecca Watson over Twitter. And, 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 and like, again, like you said, like you, you, a lot of people said, can you give us actual examples of this stuff you're talking about? And even after, after the speech, he like still is very defensive about this and not actually providing examples of these these ridiculous straw men that he's talking about, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's really, really, really baffling in a certain way because it's like, you know, his first remarks were offensive, but they were more clueless than they were, you know, just mean-spirited, you know, and it it was definitely a, a man of privilege who was so shocked that anyone would ever think that men have to maybe shut up and listen for a while before, <laughs> to women's experiences before rendering judgment. Like, the very notion that that men just aren't the ultimate authority on everything was, I think, just so new to him that 
he just kind of acted poorly. But then when he was called out on it, instead of listening and, and kind of absorbing and maybe thinking a little harder about these issues, he instead just went completely nuts on and <laughs> used the CSI blog to write a lot of accusatory baseless claims about P.V. Myers and Rebecca Watson particularly, um, accusing them of saying things they didn't actually, you know, really say. So it, it was kind of, you know, I think what made it particularly hard to deal with is this is a secularist skeptics conference. So in theory, everyone should be oriented towards evidence and other things like that. But instead <laughs> what we have is, you know, this incredibly bad behavior. <laughs> Yeah. Again, not based on actual facts or evidence, just based on what this uh, this this dude's you know opinions on how the world is, which are entirely wrong. Yeah, and it was particularly frustrating for me because I spoke like not right after him, but shortly right after him, and uh-huh. like I felt like my speech was so or like I spent so much time and effort working on this speech and bringing together you know, evidence and examples of the points I was making and they have to do it shortly after somebody basically issued a bunch of evidence free baseless accusations. <laughs> <laughs> and they continued to do so for the rest of the conference was kind of amazing. I mean, obviously I wasn't really focused particularly on um, anti-feminist in the movement. I was really making more of a pro-feminist argument generally, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And again, I'm talking to my good friend, Amanda Marcotte. Um, So unless you have anything much more to say about this clown, uh, this jerk, we should should move on because actually I I, want to focus on, because again, like that, that was the beginning of the conference. But overall, you wrote and what I've seen people tweeting overall, the rest of the conference, other than this, this jerk at the very beginning, this moron, uh, the sexist, the sexist SOB, the rest of the conference was actually really positive, and what you guys got to talk about and discuss and, and do was was overall a really great time. So so tell us tell us about some of the stuff that happened when at the conference because you you talked a bit. Uh, talk a little tell us a little bit about your speech and what you what you discussed. Yeah, I, I want to make it very clear, you know, that the staff of Center for Inquiry is overall excellent, and they worked really hard at putting this together and got a great roster of speakers. And yeah. the topics were really on topic and were really forceful and interesting. My particular talk was about, um, my argument was basically that skepticism and secularism and feminism are aligned movements and they need to work together. So I, I basically talked about how if you're not paying a lot of attention to the feminist movement, they're actually very much a rationality and reality-based movement, particularly as of late. You know, everything's very focused on using feminist principles plus evidence to sort of make the world a better place. So I talked specifically about some of the science battles over reproductive rights and particularly how our opposition, both the secularists and the feminists, are basically like the religious rights, the theocrats who kind of want to put their, want to make their religious dogma, you know, of the law. (laughs) Mm-hmm. And, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I think, um, it was a pretty good speech in that, insofar as I think everyone got my point. <laughs> I, I spoke, <laughs> I spoke at length about the plan B debacle and how this is a really good example of here are all these feminists making these science-based evidence-based arguments, pointing one over and over to research, science, evidence, holding the Obama administration accountable to their promise to put science first pointing out how, in fact, they're putting the religious right in their their propaganda and lies first because they're so afraid of them in this particular case. And, you know, sort of implying, like, where were the seculars? Where was the secular movement while we were having this battle? Like, it, it needed to be people standing up just as much for science as, as for women. 